John Ambrose Fleming was born on November 29, in 1849, in the small city of Lancaster, England, in UK. He was known by his middle name Ambrose. His father, James Fleming, was the minister in the Congregational Church. His mother was Mary Ann Basley. John Ambrose Fleming was the eldest of seven children of James Fleming. Then, Minister of the local Congregational Chapel. Fleming showed a number of childhood traits in common with other many scientific traits, a thirst for scientific knowledge and an institution for practical invention that would let him from a bedroom experimenter to a re-owned engineer and pioneer of electronic age. When Ambrose was three years old, the family moved to London. He was educated by his mother to age 10, learning to read, sit on her knees. Ambrose learned to use mechanical tools in his grandfather's cement works. At age 11, rectus photography, coating and fixing his own glass plates to be used in his home-built camera and becoming a skilled photographer, making his own photographic plates from collodion and silver nitrate. He developed his own photos using potassium cyanide. He learned about electricity and built batteries and capacitors. He used this to give powerful shock to any willing friends who expressed doubt about the potency of his homemade electrical equipment. Ambrose was congenitally deaf, a condition that worsened within the age. It did not affect him too badly until he was in his middle age. At age 12, he started university college school. He became bottom of his class in Latin, but in mathematics, he excelled. He decided he wanted to become an engineer. To do this, he needed to pay a fee to become an apprentice, but he couldn't afford it. In June 1887, at age 37, Ambrose Fleming was married to a woman 13 years old, Clara Ripley Pratt, a lawyer's daughter, but she died at age 16 in 1970. In 1926, at age 76, Fleming retired to the small coastal town of Sidmouth to share a house with two of his sisters. He converted the basement into the laboratory. Fleming was devout Anglican. After he retired, he preached about the resurrection and founded the Christianist Evolution Protest Movement to attack the theory of evolution by natural selection. Then, in July 1938, Fleming married to the Zenosolois Olive May Franks. When they got married, he was 78 and she was 13. After their 70 years of marriage, Sir John Ambrose Fleming died at age 95 in his home in Sidmouth on April 18, 1945. He had no children and left significant amounts of money to Christian charities that helped the poor. He was educated by his mother at the age of 10. At the age of 11, he built model steam engines and boats. He constructed a camera by cigar box, becoming a skilled photographer, making his own photographic plates from collodion and silver nitrate. He was educated mainly at University College School on Gower Street at the West End of London. He then continued his study at University College London, where he studied for his bachelor's degree under two famous names, the Morgan the mathematician and Carrie Foster the physicist. Unfortunately, he had to leave after the end of his second year due to the family's limited sources. To search for money, he took a job with a seat builder in Dublin and then took an employment at the stock jobbing firm in the London Stock Exchange for two years. He finished work at four, enabling him to study in the evening and as a result, he graduated in 1870 with a first class degree. He furthered his studies, but before he could, he need to replenish his funds. With this aim, he took Rosal School for 18 months before the Royal College of Science to study chemistry in Kensington in 1872. 
He studied the electric battery and this resulted in the first paper he presented. Fleming was known as a father of modern electronics. He was best known for developing the first successful thermionic valve which was also called as a vacuum tube, a diode or a Fleming valve. So how did things work? So the diode was connected so the first electrode, a wire filament, was made white hot by electric current flowing through it. As Katri had observed, electrons can leave the hot filament but cannot retain. Hence, current can flow in one direction only. A metal plate from the other electrode separated from the first electrode by a vacuum. Electrons cross the vacuum forming an electric current. They can do this only when the hot electrode is negatively charged. When there is an alternating voltage, current flows through the diode when the hot electrode is negative and stops flowing when the hot electrode turns positive. In this mode of operation, it can be described as a current rectifier. His invention was the ancestor of all electronic tube, a development that gave birth not only to radio communications but to the entire electronics industry. This device began the age of electronics and was designed by using the power plant that Marconi used to transmit the first radio message across the Atlantic. He sought a better means of amplifying radio waves which had been discovered by Heinrich Hertz in 1886. Fleming realized his answer lay in the Edison effect he had seen Frederick Cartier demonstrate in 1873. Cartier observed that a piece of negatively charged red-hot iron lost its charge into the surrounding air. When the iron was positively charged, it held on to its charge. The asymmetrical behavior dependent on the sign of electric charge was the basic science behind Fleming's invention of the diode. Fleming also devised the left hand rule for motors and right hand rule for generators to help himself and his students to remember the, relation, the relationship governing the directions of electric current electric field and bars. He also received a few honors such as a 1910 huge model for his research in electricity and electrical measurement. On 1921, he received Albert Medal for especially for his original invention of the thermionic valve now so largely employed in wireless telegraphy and for other purposes. Third, he received on he received Faraday Medal on 1928 of the Institution of Electrical Engineers. For he received a knighted for service to science and industry, becoming Sir Ambrose Fleming on 1929. Then he received on 1930 he received a Total Medal of the Physical Society of London. Then he received a Institute of Radio Engineers Medal of Honor on 1933. And lastly, he received a Franklin Medal in 1935.